how's everyone doing today? Um, my name is Evie. Some of you might know me as the guy on the news. Thanks for New North Tele Thanks to New North Television. Um, but today I'm here to talk to you about my CAPS internship program. Um, I did an internship with a couple of places, kind of with the theme of television and film production. So the first place I interned at was New TV. And at New TV, what I was looking for in that internship was I wanted a place that was structured that I could go to pretty much every day and fill out those 20 hours a week. New TV, for some of you who don't know, is um, on Needham Street, and they have three channels, television channels, that air every day, that are constantly on air, and that is the community channel, the education channel, and the government channel. And through those th three channels, they put on the different shows that they produce in their little studio, where uh, members can come in, film, make their own programs with the resources that New TV provides. So New TV was the place that I wanted to be, mostly because of the structure and a place kind of like an office with a boss, you know, someone that I could interact with, learn from in the professional industry. But also they had a lot of great resources. Here at New North, we're also blessed with amazing resources at the New North Television Department. Um, we have amazing cameras, um, people, editing software. But at New TV, um, being a professional broadcast center, they had a lot more equipment like professional grade cinema cameras and broadcast live television screening and broadcasting equipment that I wanted to get used to and kind of get to know as something that I wanted to, and I was interested in doing as a job. <coughs> now, the other place that I interned was the YCCA. Um, a lot of people know this as just the YMCA, but it's actually a little subunit of the YMCA. It's the Y Center for the Creative Arts. Um, many of you may have taken classes there in music when you were younger, or maybe you still do, but um, a lot of the stuff they do there is they actually have classes and um, things, resources that students can use to create their own music, mostly. For me, that was kind of an opportunity to create videos for them, because they have a lot of content that they need to be put out. And music is one thing, but video is another, and I wanted to kind of integrate those two. Um, at the YCCA, I had a lot more creative freedom where I would create videos surrounding these students, kind of highlight their work, some of the stuff they were doing with weekly videos on a certain student called Student of the Week. And also, I had a little, a little more of a focus on audio production, which is something I wanted to improve on personally, sound design and stuff like that, where I had um, the equipment to work with that there. Um, and basically, the reason I wanted to intern at both of these places is because I wanted a healthy balance. I wanted structure, which was provided by New TV, somewhere where I could really go to all the time. But I also wanted the other side, which is creativity, and somewhere where I could really be more free. Because at New TV, I had a lot of clients, such as the City of Noon, I would create PSAs. The Girl Scouts of America would come in and they'd be like, hey, we need a PSA about how to be a good babysitter. And I would go and I would make, get that footage and edit it up for them, send it to them so that they could give it out to all the Girl Scouts. Um, maybe the city of Newton, like the library, needed something about recycling. That's the kind of stuff that I would make. I didn't really have a lot of creative freedom with that because they would give me a job and I would do it, I'd get it done, send it out to them as something that they needed and it's something that they could use as a resource. And at the YCCA, I had that creative freedom to kind of create any kind of project that I wanted with the help of these students. Also, these students I was very happy to meet because a lot of them are, I'm going to say, prodigies. They're amazing. They are incredibly talented, and I was very lucky to meet them because, I don't know, you know, in the future, you never know, like, they could get really big and then, hey, I'm heavy, remember me? I uh, helped you out with some videos. <laughs> <laughs> you want to give me a job? So, you know, that could happen. Even though they're younger, younger than me, I kind of had that foresight, and I was like, you never know. So that's why I entered at both of these places. Now, I want to quick, quickly take a poll. So who here watches Netflix? All right, that's like the majority of you. Netflix. Now, who here, um, kind of when they're bored, just flips through the TV channels to watch television? Okay, probably a factor of like four times less. So that's probably what, I, I mean, that's something that I assumed kind of going into this because I did a little bit of research during my internship as well. Um, I looked into how the industry is changing because that is something that I know is going to affect me later on when I'm working. And what we saw here today is very similar to what this graph from 2017 shows, where we actually have that right there in late 2016, where Netflix and other media sharing and content um, sharing um, providers or websites, you could say, have surpassed the top cable TV providers. That means that more people are watching Netflix than <coughs> the TV channels. And that was something that was super apparent to me when I was there sitting on new TV. 
and they were having a kind of conference in the other room talking about why it is that they don't have as many members as they did last year, how many people are not as subscribing to their channels. Because that is something that is a hardship for them right now. They, they have to go through that kind of every day and kind of they're losing viewership because of things like Netflix and the creative side of things taking over. So this is something you might have seen 20 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. Um, and now I think a shift you might see in the industry is now television shows look a little more like this. So things like that is a little bit of what Netflix and stuff has given more, more insight into. Obviously you can find friends on Netflix as well as Breaking Bad, but um, the television industry, as we can see, has kind of taken a shift more toward film, where we see the TV shows that you once loved as um, you know, sitcoms, kind of actors being put on a stage and we see their lives unfold in front of us. Um, that kind of has shifted into more film-related and uh, influenced work that's more creative, I think, and has a bit more of a kind of film, a cinematic feel to it. So me as a cap student, why does all of this kind of matter? I was getting to know the industry and I wanted to kind of share that with my audience. And as a CAPS internship student, I have to keep a weekly blog, or a blog actually. And a lot of the students, every single student actually, had to keep these up on their websites. So what I wanted to do is because I have you know, video experience and I wanted to kind of grow as a video maker, I pitched to the supervisors, Mr. Gianquitti and Mr. Finnegan, how about I make a blog? You know, that's something that I could put out to kind of share with my audience what it was I was doing in you know, the recent past and kind of share, share that kind of experience with my audience in a different format. So I was working on my blogs, uh, my first one. Um, I was kind of doing a little bit of a rough job on it. was my first one after all. A couple weeks in, you know, I was shooting footage, trying to like get kind of the environment sense of my internship, what it was like to kind of show you guys, put on my YouTube channel, when suddenly my computer crashed. The screen went black. And I was left looking at myself in that black screen, and I just thought, what the heck am I going to do? Because a video editor losing his editing software is like a chef losing his hands. Or a knife or cutting, you know, it's, it's crucial. If I can't work with my content with the stuff that I'm working on, you know, it's just never going to come to fruition. So obviously, as usually happens, mom saves the day. <laughs> Mom says today she took me. She took me to the Apple Store, and um, I talked to some of the technicians. Um, that's why I'm almost asleep. At the <laughs> hours. We were there for hours. I don't blame um, you. Sorry. <laughs> she didn't know that I was going to be up there, but um, I, they they recommended that I buy one of these things over here. This is a hard drive, and basically just saves all of the content that I have, all the media, all the videos, the clips, the tiny footage that I had all onto this one device so that my computer doesn't have to process it all at once and its brain doesn't explode. So once I had this, you know, I was um, up and running again. I didn't have to make up weeks of work. But then I was left with the moral side of things. Um, sorry. Um, the moral side of things, which for me was, earlier in that day, I, I looked at myself in that blank screen and I thought, you know, why am I even doing this? Like, do I have to really pull through and finish? Like, who's gonna care in the end? Like, it's just my life, my day to day. Like, I don't, I didn't want to be one of those, you know, classic YouTuber people being like, hi guys, this is my day, this is what I've been doing, like, be interested in me. Like, you know, I didn't think I could captivate an audience that way because I'm honestly like, who he cares about, you know, my life. I mean, it's like, it's like, you, you it's my life. So, I ended up kind of, you know, rethinking things. But in the end, I really talked to myself and I, I really thought and I was like, well, I guess I'd never know if I'm going to get an audience unless I try. So I hit publish and this is what went up onto the internets, the interwebs. My name is Evie Tarker, John. I'm a senior at New Thorne High School and I'm doing something a little different from my last semester of senior year. If you go to New North, you've probably seen this intro roll before. That's me. And there's me again. And I'm Eddie Tarver. For the past four years, I've been studying TV and film production at school. Thanks.
Thanks to Mr. Dalmop and Amanda, I've learned the skills and confidence to take the risk and study film production in college. Go get them. In my mind, if I'm going to put it all on the line, I might as well take it as far as I can, right? Luckily, I go to a school with one of the leading capstone programs in the country. Let me show you what it's all about. This is Mr. Gianquitti. Call me Mr. G. Hey, Mr. Finnegan. Hey, call me Finnegan. These guys are helping me get out of school and learn something. As part of the CAPS program, you can do one of two things. Either research a topic that interests you, eventually writing a paper, or what I chose. Through CAPS internship, I can find myself a place to intern that is part of the industry I've been exploring my entire high school career. Fast forward a bit, and... So here at New TV, I've been doing a couple projects already. I basically look for stories around the community. Um, I've already made a documentary about Glee Streets, a bakery that opened a couple years ago in the center that had a really interesting backstory and that I knew about. Right now, I'm starting a couple of projects over at the Boys and Girls Club because they have a lot to offer as a nonprofit here in New York. And I want... All right, so I'm gonna stop it right there because I don't want to be too crunched on time. If you guys want to check out the rest of that, it's on my YouTube channel, just my full name, Evitar Gershon. I'm just gonna move on a bit. So, after creating that first vlog, I thought to myself, okay, I had 24 hours, I got 500 views. That is a good amount, and for me, I felt good about that because I hadn't really gotten any attention on, you know, media sharing platforms before, so 500 was a good place to start. But I wanted to grow. And I obviously wasn't going to get to where this guy is right now, but, with, you know, 10 million subscribers, but I really wanted to kind of follow that same model. So I studied, I looked at what people could, what we're doing on YouTube and I really thought okay this is what I need to do and I wanted to create the next vlog with something that I could give to my audience not just something for them to watch but something to them for them to gain from something them, for them to learn so this next video I created um, was kind of more something that I wanted to do to inspire audiences I'm gonna give you a little bit of a taste of that I'm also not gonna play the whole thing if you want to check out the rest of it I'm not gonna play the whole thing you can obviously go to my YouTube don't let school stop you from doing what you love. As people, we're driven by a sense of passion and purpose. And for some of us, school can take that away. Now this video isn't meant to hate on school or teachers or our education system in general. Simply a reminder to all of you watching who might be stuck in your classroom or dreading that homework you have later or worrying about that big test tomorrow. Don't let school stop you from doing what you love. A lot of us have already been taking this advice for years. Whether it's doing after-school activities like playing a sport or doing theater, this is Cabaret 2018, or if it's a hobby, selling shoes, making videos. Yo, you need some boots? You just can't let school put you down. Like that. Yo, school's kind of put me down. See, school is a big part of almost every teenager's life, but often, especially in high school, a lot of us have developed our interests enough to know at a certain point what kind of subjects we do and don't enjoy. For example. As you may have guessed by now, I love TV and media arts. It makes me tick. I love creating a project from nothing but a camera and my imagination. Alright, so I'm back here in New TV now. We're going to do a live broadcast with some of the city council members, so let's get to it. So this right here is the control room where the show is cut live using the buttons here on this board. Each button corresponds to a different camera. So the second that that button is pressed by the director, the tape records exactly the footage that is coming from only that camera. The news and programs like that are all cut live, just like we've done in this control room right here. 